All right, so I'm going to present today on patent ductus arteriosus in dogs, which is also commonly called PDA. So first off, what is this? Well, patent means failing to close, and ductus arteriosus refers to a shunt between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. And that is pictured right here in this picture. So this shunt is normal when the dog is in utero because the embryo is getting all of its oxygen requirements from the placenta. But after birth, the shunt is supposed to begin to close immediately after that first breath. In dogs with PDA, this doesn't happen and it, ha it remains open or patent. Um, so this becomes a problem because it causes the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. But how does it cause this mixing? So the aorta is one of the largest arteries in the body and carries large amounts of oxygenated blood throughout the entire body. The pulmonary artery carries a small amount of deoxygenated blood just to the lungs. So because the aorta carries more blood than the pulmonary artery, this creates a difference in pressure. So this allows blood to move from the aorta, which is here, into the pulmonary artery. And this means there is less blood being pumped to the rest of the body. So this means the left side of the heart, pictured here, has to work a lot harder to get the same amount of blood uh, pumped to the entire body. So some causes. This is just a birth defect. So in normal, healthy puppies, the shunt will close immediately after birth. And they don't know why in some dogs it doesn't, but it just doesn't. It's congenital. So some symptoms. First off, there are breathing issues uh, like coughing, exercise intolerant, increased breathing rate, and this is all due to the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. There's also hind, hind end weakness during exercise. Again, the muscles aren't getting enough oxygen to be able to work. There's uh, arrhythmias or irregular heartbeat. Again, this is due to the left side of the heart having to work harder. Um, you can have pink or bluish gums or bluish skin, and this is an indication that tissues are not getting enough oxygen. And in some severe cases, there can be left-sided uh, congestive heart fail failure, again, because the, heart, the left side of the heart has to work a lot harder than the right side. Um, there's also rapid irregular heartbeat, again, due to the left side working harder, and stunted growth because the tissues are not getting enough oxygen to support uh, proper growth. So there are a couple of ways you can diagnose this. Um, you can take radiographs to determine if the left side of the heart is enlarged, but this isn't a very good method of diagnosis. Um, you can t also take an electrocardiogram or ECG to look at the rhythm of the heart. Um, but the best method and the method that cardiologists typically use are echocardiograms, which is kind of like a cardiac ultrasound, and it shows the uh, the blood flow throughout the heart. So over here, I have an image from an echocardiogram in a dog with PDA. So this up here is the pulmonary artery, and this down here is the descending aorta. And here you can see that the, there is coloration here, indicating that there is blood flow from the pulmonary artery to the descending aorta. And this is not normal because what should be here is just this grayish color that you see here, indicating that there's a closure, but this dog has PDA, so there's clearly blood flow between the pulmonary artery and aorta. So how do we treat this? The only treatment is surgery, and they recommend you do it as soon as possible to prevent further damage to the heart. And the only, and so what they do to do this is they thread a catheter through the femoral artery into the heart and they inject a coil into the shunt to try and stop that blood flow. And that would take some skill, man and man. Uh, anybody, yeah, I'll let you point the people. Jennifer. What's the estimated cost of that heart surgery? I have no idea, I didn't look into that. Mm -hmm. Anybody have an idea? Of course, a shunt can be subclinical too. I mean, the PDA, I should say, right? So you could have maybe a dog, a puppy that's not doing well, but not enough to maybe make you suspicious. And then, of course, it can lead to death if it's left long enough and it's big enough. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. In the fetal life, it's supposed to be doing that, and then 
once the lungs inflate, because the, the, the lungs aren't inflated in fetal life, they're full of water. And then once the first breath is taken, the pressure differences are supposed to close that off or help close it off over, you know, maybe a day or so. But everything has to work right. It's amazing. And another thing about circulation in the fetus, a lot of the blood is bypassing the liver too. And I don't think we've talked about that. Puppies with liver shunts, I don't think we've had that presentation, have we? That's another thing about circulation that's normal in the fetus, but if it persists in postnatal life, then you've got problems. Because you made the good point, everything's coming from the placenta, the oxygen and nutrients, everything. One more comment, maybe. Uh, what would be the estimated life expectancy if someone never noticed it? Uh, very short. Very short. If you didn't yeah. notice it. I mean, I'm sure people would notice it after a time because the, I mean, one of the most severe symptoms is congestive heart failure. So mm -hmm. you can let it get to that point and then they'll definitely notice those symptoms. Yeah. And I bet you if there's like a little tiny leak, the, the dog would almost have a normal life if you never know it. You know how sometimes that works. Okay, excellent. And then we've got Brianna.